human could survive, they would be in for a shock. An astonishing event is about to take place. The Earth is on a collision course with another planet and about to experience the biggest bang in its history. So far, we have seen how a giant cloud of gas and dust collapsed to form our solar system and how the Earth's molten iron core created a magnetic field that protected the planet from the deadly effects of the solar wind. The Earth's formation was a violent and dramatic process, but an even more astonishing event was about to take place, a collision so large that it would melt the whole planet. And the only reason we know this event happened is thanks to a large object circling over our heads. The moon is the Earth's constant companion. For centuries, humans wondered where it came from. There were many theories. Some thought that it was formed by the early Earth spinning so fast that it threw off material into space. Others proposed that the moon was a passing planet captured by the Earth's gravity but no one really knew. In 1963, the United States launched the Apollo program. One of the mission's aims was to discover how the moon was formed. Houston, uh, Sweet 16 has arrived. Okay. Ryan, you go for landing. Okay, uh, okay, down at three. Stand by for contact. Contact. Wow! Oh, man. Fantastic. In the late 1960s and the early 70s, American astronauts made six visits to the moon. They played golf, tested their skills at off-road driving, and collected 380 kilograms of moon rock for scientists back home to study. The pieces they brought back to Earth revealed something strange. When scientists examined them, they found that they were very dry, as if they had been heated. This was baffling. Any theory of the Moon's creation needed to explain this mystery. In the 1990s, Planetary scientist Robin Canup decided to put a new theory to the test. Using a supercomputer simulation, she modeled what would happen if the Earth collided with another planet. The results were a revelation. This is a, a simulation of a single impact by a roughly Mars-sized planet, shown here in the upper right, colliding with the young proto-Earth, represented by this object here. So the impactors come in and hit the Earth at a very oblique angle, at about 45 degrees. And you can see this long arm of material right here. That's actually the impactor. It's been stretched out and distorted by the impact event itself. There's an inner clump of material, you can see it right here, that will re-impact with the Earth. After a little more time, this outer clump of impactor material it makes a very close pass by the Earth. As a result of the Earth's gravity, this initial clump is sheared out into a long arm of material, which then finally breaks up to form a disk. And it's from this disk of material orbiting the Earth that we believe the Moon then later accumulates. From this simulation, Canop has worked out exactly what happened during the impact. There would have been this unbelievably large impacting planet racing towards the Earth at a speed of seven miles per second. 
This would have been an enormous object, a planet that was half the size of the Earth itself, and so would have completely filled the sky just before impact. The impact itself was an incredibly energetic event with enough energy to completely melt the whole of the Earth and vaporize a significant portion of the rock in the Earth. When the planet hit the Earth, the glancing blow smashed material into space. Much of this debris stayed in orbit as a vast disk of rock and dust. A clump of this circling material then became large enough for its gravity to suck in other matter from the disk. And this became our moon. It is now 50 million years since the Earth began to form. On our clock, in which 12 hours represents the whole of Earth history, still only eight minutes have passed. At this stage in its life, the Earth appeared very different to the planet we know. The ground remained molten from the impact for thousands of years. And the moon was 15 times closer than it is today. You can imagine what is now a stunning sight on a full moon night would have been breathtaking at that time, with the moon 15 times larger than we currently see it. The collision with the planet and the formation of the moon were key events in creating an Earth fit for life. The collision could have tilted the Earth on its axis. This tilt gives us the seasons. Thanks to this tilt, the Earth's climate changes gently through the year. It gives us the annual cycle of life. It may have been possible for life to evolve on Earth without these seasons, but it would have been a very different planet from the one we know today. The creation of the moon also gave us the tides. When the moon was close, these were much stronger. But they have weakened as the moon has slowly drifted away. Nowadays, we take the oceans for granted. But four and a half billion years ago, they didn't exist. And without water, there could be no life. Where all our water came from and how it got here is one of the most amazing stories in science. Naked Science is investigating the birth of the Earth. How did nature build a planet on which humans could live? So far we've seen that the Earth formed from a giant cloud of gas and dust. Its iron core created a magnetic field that protected it from the deadly particles in the solar wind. And it survived a big hit with another planet. But for the Earth to have life, it had to have water. Where that came from is one of the great mysteries of science. There are currently around 326 million trillion gallons of water on the planet. That's 394 trillion Olympic swimming pools. But many astronomers think that if the early Earth contained water at all, it was very little. <laughs> 